Jesse Mihalik has a degree in computer science and a lot of other things geeky. A software engineer by trade, Jesse now writes full time from her home in Texas. She's the author of three space opera trilogies featuring smart, dangerous women and smitten men. Go for it, Jesse. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am Jesse Mahalik. I do write space opera romance. And today I'm reading from Capture the Sun, which is the third book in my Starlight Shadow trilogy. And if you like what you hear, you can read the first chapters of all of my books on my website at jessemahalik.com. This scene happens early in the book, just after Lexi Bowen, an intergalactic thief for hire, arrives on Velovia to meet a potential employer, but instead she runs into some trouble in the hotel and is looking for an escape route. A tall, lean man wearing a long hooded coat appeared in my path, and I jerked to a halt. He hadn't stepped out of a doorway or from a hidden alcove. He'd literally appeared from thin air, something no human could accomplish. A teleporter wasn't as deadly as a telekinetic, but they were much harder to evade. I slid the hem of my dress up, drew the plaz knife strapped to my thigh, and activated it. The 10 center centimeter energy blade shimmered into existence glowing red, the lethal setting. The short blade wasn't a huge threat, but it was better than nothing. Behind me, a deep voice shouted, stop, as if I was gonna listen to that. The man in front of me tilted his head and I caught a glimpse of a familiar one-sided smile. My breath caught, it couldn't be. He closed the distance between us. The hood shadowed his face, but I would know those striking gold streak green eyes anywhere. Nilo Shorin, Voloff, hand-to-hand -hand specialist, teleporter, liar, had just found me, even though I'd been on planet for less than two hours. A maelstrom of emotion arose, annoyance, anger, desire, happiness, and most dangerous of all, hope. I kept the blade between us. His smile grew wider and he murmured, going to stab me? Depends, are you gonna betray me again? Something fleeting crossed his face, but he shook his head. Believe it or not, I'm here to help. I didn't believe it, but another shout behind me proved that I didn't have much choice. Nilo stepped closer and I deactivated the blade. When I stabbed him, it would be because I'd meant it, not by accident. Take a deep breath, he ordered as his hands clamped around my bare upper arms. I sucked in a breath to tell him exactly where he could shove his orders, but I didn't get a chance before cold power washed over me and the world disappeared. The vertigo was instant and intense. It felt like spinning through zero gravity where there was no up or down, just endless twists and turns in inky darkness. Tavi had tried to explain it, but she left out a few pertinent details. Like how I could still feel Nilo's taut body pressed up against mine, a tiny reassurance in this hellacious void, and how I could feel his power, sharp and cold, swirling around both of us, binding us together. The glass of wine I drank was dangerously close to reappearing when the world popped back into existence. Nilo stumbled and we both nearly went down. He cursed and steadied me for a second, then let go. My stomach heaved, unhappy with the entire ordeal. What were you thinking, coming to Volovia? Nilo started, his tone furious, but I tuned him out. I closed my eyes, tilted my head back, and took several deep, calming breaths. It helped. I still felt nauseous, but I no longer felt like I would immediately vomit on Nilo's shoes. When I opened my eyes, he held out a reusable bottle. I dropped the plaz knife in my tote and accepted it. Nilo still wore a scowl, but it was tempered by reluctant sympathy. Sorry, he grumbled. Humans tend to have stronger reaction than Voloffs. I should have warned you. I opened the bottle and took a cautious sip of cold water. When it stayed down, I took a longer drink and looked around. The fading sunlight revealed that we were in a narrow clearing surrounded by a forest of massive coniferous trees. A small house blended into the landscape with dark brown wooden siding, a curved front wall of floor to ceiling windows, and a sloping green roof covered in plants. There were no other houses nearby. Indeed, with the exception of what was likely a shed or a garage, there were no other structures nearby, just trees, trees, and more trees. Nervousness drifted through me like smoke. Despite our squabbles, I didn't think Nilo would take me into the woods and murder me, but if he tried, no one would hear me scream. Of course, if he was stupid enough to try, then no one would hear him scream either. Bolstered by that thought, I turned and gave him the same slow perusal I'd just given our surroundings. At some point while I'd been trying to keep my wine down, he'd pushed back his hood, giving me a clear view, and one thing remained true. Nilo Shorin was an unfairly handsome man. Not only did he have a bone structure that would make models weep with envy, but he also had dark hair, tan skin, and stunning eyes. 
Nilo's irises were startlingly green, as deep and vibrant as the forest around us, and streaked through with bolts of gold. Balaf's eyes always tended to be interesting, but Nilo's were over the top. I pulled myself away from the magnetic draw of his gaze and looked at the rest of him. He was looking more unkempt than usual. His hair was too long, and several days' worth of dark stubble shadowed his jaw. There was a subtle weariness to ex expression that even his usual charming facade couldn't quite hide. Are you okay? I asked with a frown. That surprised a chuckle out of him. It's been a long week, he admitted. His humor evaporated, and he leveled a glare at me. And a lot of that is thanks to you. What were you thinking, returning here? I lifted an eyebrow at his tone. I don't have to defend my decisions to you, even if those decisions often started and ended with money. Why did you grab me? Where are we? He sighed and swept an arm towards the house. Welcome to my home. I glanced between him and the building. It wasn't what I'd pictured for him in the brief moments I'd allowed myself to think of it at all, but I suppose a teleporter could live anywhere. Envy nipped at me. How much easier would my job be if I could just flit around with a thought? I realize it might not be what you're used to, Nilo started, a tone, note of defensiveness in his voice. I shook myself from my thoughts and interrupted him before he could take offense. It's beautiful, just not what I expected. His expression lit with interest. What did you expect? I figured you'd be closer to the city, probably in one of the tall buildings in the central district. I could almost picture it, a fancy condo with no hint of personality and furniture that was made for looks rather than comfort. I'd had a very similar place until I'd realized it was a waste of money when I spent the vast majority of my time away on jobs. Nilo's mouth twisted into a sardonic smile. I own a flat on the 42nd floor of the third tallest building, he admitted, but this is a better option for now. Why? Because Empress Nepru doesn't know it exists. My blood froze in my veins. Thank you.